Hi everyone, Professor B here, just going to go over some of the directions for identification of an unknown organism in Module 11. There's oftentimes some confusion on how to complete this assignment, so I just wanted to complete an example for you to kind of walk you through the project and the process that you should be following in order to complete this project. So when you go to Module 11, let's select Content here, we have the identification of an unknown. The first thing you want to do is read here Module 11 Unknown Project. This has information about the project, some tips on completing it, and a couple of pictures and videos that you may find helpful in completing this project. After reading the introduction, you can complete these two connect assignments. Just click on the assignment, complete. These are virtual identification exercises that you do in connect. This is to provide you some practice on how to read a uh, unknown table, how to compare organisms, what to look for, and how to differentiate between different test results. It also helps you with using a table or guide of known organisms in order to identify your unknown. Once you have completed uh, these two labs, you're going to sign up for your unknown. So we have two things you have to do. Before taking this quiz here on the unknowns, this is not a graded quiz. Before taking this quiz, you have to go to your groups tool. So you're gonna go to, click this link right here, uh, groups, or you can go to the top, select tools, and then select groups. If you are in a course, some online instructors do not use the group tool, they may use a Google sign up sheet. If they use a Google sign up sheet, you will just go in and sign up for your unknown number on the Google sheet and then complete this quiz. Check with your instructor or look at the directions under here, under the unknown project survey. Be sure to uh, take a look at what instructions your, your teacher gives you, your professor gives you, so that you know whether you're supposed to sign up through the group tools or you're supposed to sign up through a Google sheet. In this case, we're going to sign up through the group tool. So I'm going to select this group link and I'm going to come in here and I will select my unknown. Now this is in a current course, so most of the students have already selected their unknown number. Uh, as an instructor, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select number 209. So I click on 209 and I now am in 209. Now, as an instructor, I cannot select uh, a group here, so I'm not able to select that number, but that's what I would do. I would sign up for that particular number. Once I know what my unknown number is going to be, I'm going to go back to Module 11, and I'm going to take this quiz. This is the Unknown Project Survey. I'm going to select on the Unknown Project Survey, and start the quiz. As an instructor, I cannot start the quiz, but this is a two question ungraded quiz. All this quiz is doing is having you um, sign up, uh, tell the instructor which number you selected as well as, uh, as well as agree to not change your number. That's all this is doing. Uh, but in order to access everything, all of the results, you have to complete this quiz. You won't be able to see any of the images or anything for your results until you complete this quiz. Now I'm moving, this is a copy of what's called the unknown table. What we have here is on the left are all of the known organisms. So these are the names of the organisms. This is what we actually call um, a known, a set of knowns or a, a quality control. If my organism is positive, if I look at my organism uh, in the pictures and I identify my organism as a gram negative uh, rod, I'm gonna take a look over here on the table and I'm gonna look at the gram stain results. Under these gram stain results, I see all of these organisms are gram negative rods. These are gram positive cocci and these are gram positive rods. If my organism is a gram negative rod, it cannot possibly be any of these two groups down here. So I automatically have narrowed down my organism by removing the organisms that do not match my gram stain result. So now I know I have a gram negative rod. Once I look at my gram stain result and I have completed my survey, once I've determined my gram stain, when I come back to module 11, 
the next set of test results will now be available to me. The next set of test results are phenol red test results. In the phenol red test results, you will have a glucose result and a lactose result. When you open up that picture, you will have a num you you will see the unknown numbers below each image. You have to know what the result looks like, be able to determine the result, and then find your unknown number underneath that result. In the unknown table, if I take a look at that phenol red result and I determine that my organism is positive for fermentation and gas production, I am going to select only those organisms that are positive for fermentation and gas production in a phenol red glucose. I look at the glucose test results. I see all of these are positive, but I have two organisms here that are not. These are alkaline organisms. So the unknown I've been assigned cannot possibly be that organism, these two organisms, Pseudomonas or A. faecalis. I can't be either one of these. I then look at the lactose results. If the lactose sugar results are also acid and, uh, or fermentation acid with gas production, I then take a look at these and I can see that E. coli is positive for fermentation. In my lactose result, I have acid gas for Klebsiella, both erogenes and pneumoniae. I have acid or alkaline for proteus. Proteus sometimes will ferment, sometimes will not. So not all organisms are going to be exactly acid or exactly alkaline. But all of the other organisms, even those that were positive or acid gas in the glucose test are actually alkaline in the lactose test. So it can't possibly be any of these organisms because my unknown is showing positive for fermentation acid conditions with gas production for both glucose and lactose. So I am already now narrowed down to these four organisms. Now I take a look at these four organisms. Once I look at my phenol red, I've looked at my gram stain result. I've looked at my phenol red glucose result, my phenol red lactose result. I now have access to the other biochemical results because gram stain and phenol red results are required identification in the identification process. Phenol red is, is one test. So we take a look at these two test results and now all of my other biochemical tests are now available to me. So I am down to these four organisms here. If I take a look at these four organisms, I'm gonna come along here and look for a test that really allows me to differentiate as much as possible. So I might come here to a citrate test. In the citrate test, which is part of the IMVIC series, I see that E. coli is negative for citrate both Klebsiella's are positive for citrate and Proteus is negative for citrate. If I take a look at those test results and I determine that my citrate test is negative, I know that it can't possibly be Klebsiella because Klebsiella, although it is positive for fermentation and gas production in both phenol red broths, it's also positive for citrate and the organism I have is negative. So now I have narrowed it down to E. coli or uh, Proteus. I now take a look at another test, let's say the casein test, which is a milk plate. And in the casein test, my test result is negative. So I come here to casease, and in the casease, E. coli is negative, but proteus is positive. That means that the organism I selected, my unknown number is E. coli, because only E. coli is positive for acid with gas production in glucose, acid with gas production in lactose, it is negative for citrate, and it is um, negative for casease. It is the only gram negative rod that has those results on my entire table. So you have one of the organisms that is on this table. You just don't know which one until you start comparing the test results that you see with what the known test results are on the table. So as you go through these test results, you will see them. So that now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look at the gram stain results and kind of show you how to use the numbers uh, to determine your test result. Come on, you can do it, there we go. So this is the unknown lab report. This is what you're gonna fill in. I need to go back to the module here. Since I am not able to complete the quiz, I don't have access to those gram stain results. So I'm gonna go out of my 
uh, student view and go to the instructor view just to show you what those look like. So when I leave instructor view, I'm going to go back to module 11. Now that I'm in instructor view, I can see those tables those results. So you can see here, here's the gram stain and morphology results for the unknown project. There are conditions set to this. So once you complete your unknown project survey, you will have access to this module right here, this submodule, this image. Open this up and you can see that we have three different pictures here. You should know how to read each of these three images. So you should know which is gram positive, which is gram negative, which is a rod, and which is a cocci. If you, are, if you selected um, unknown organism 65, well, 65 falls between 20 and 82. So this picture here would be the result for your organism. If you selected organism 105, 105 falls between 83 and 271, so this would be the result of your organism. And then, of course, if you picked a number between 272 and 334, this would be, this third picture would be the result of your organism. Using these results, these are your gram stain results. We have gram positives and negatives, both rods and cocci in here. Then you know what to look for on your unknown table. After looking at the gram stain results, your phenol red results are going to show up. So remember, in the phenol red test, we test each sugar individually. So in this test, again, say I picked number 105. If I picked organism number 105, well, that falls between 83 and 229. So this picture here would be the result for my unknown. I do want you to notice 272 to 334, that falls under both of these pictures, which means it can be one or the other. One or the other, you would have to record both results. Not all organisms are going to, um, are going to have an exact reaction. So uh, we can sometimes have combinations. Here we have in the phenol red lactose, that happens even more often. So here from 83 to 166, and this is 146 to 166. So if you have an organism number 162, it could be this result, this result, and notice right here, it could be this result as well. So you would have to record all three results for the phenol red lactose. What that now does for you is that tells you that you cannot rule out organisms based on phenol red results. You will have to look at other biochemical tests. So I can't use, if I have a number 105, I can't use uh, phenol red very well. I, I know what these two results are, but um, if I had one that had this one here, I won't be able to use that. So now I go to the next set of tests. And these are the remaining biochemical tests for the unknown. You can see here, this is the TSI or triple sugar iron. Here are the SIMS result from the MVIC series. This is the MVIC series right here. So this is SIM. Here's your motility, VP results, MR results, and each result has a set of numbers underneath it. You can use these numbers to determine the reaction for your unknown. If you don't know how to read these test results, then you need to go back to the module for those tests and either look in the lab manual. You can um, re revisit the... Um, the video. Uh, you can take a look at some of the descriptions that may be in the write-up, in the pre-lab write-up, but this is intended to get you to recognize the tests as well as what the results are. You will be tested on these different types of results in your practical exam, your final practical. So this is a great way for you to really practice determining these test results. And we have this for all of the tests um, that you study within this module. So you just find your number in the range and you determine this result. So you have to determine both the result and what it is for your specific organism. Once you've done that, you can then complete the unknown report. So this is the report right here. You download the report and we will open that up right here. And here is the unknown report. So you record your gram stain result right here. Of course, your name and the number of the unknown that you selected. 
What is your gram stain result, gram positive or negative, and is it a rod or a cocci? You then begin recording your test results. You don't record for every single test. You're going to be doing this for um, up to five tests. So did you identify your organism, select yes or no, and then you would type your results into the box um, and, and answer the questions for each of the tests that you used to identify your organism. When you get to the very end of your lab report, you will, of course, here type in what organism you have. And then you have some directions on a short couple of paragraphs report for what you would do with your organism. You're going to talk about your organism if it causes a disease or condition or if it's used in biotechnology. Every organism in this course will fall under one of these two categories. You do not have to do both. You do one or the other. So if your organism causes a disease or condition, you will follow these directions. If your organism does not cause a disease or condition, you will follow these directions here under the its use in biotechnology okay so you'll use uh, these directions sorry uh, these directions right here I hope that this uh, this video is helpful in in kind of walking you through the project I can't solve one for you because everybody is selecting their numbers so I can't do that for you but um, if you have any issues or you're having questions feel free to email your instructor you may want to try setting up uh, a short appointment with your instructor instructor if you can through zoom so they can help you with it if you're really struggling uh, have fun with this assignment. It's supposed to be fun. Think of it as kind of a little uh, like microbial CSI, just trying to figure out who the organism is based on biochemical results. I hope you enjoy the project and you've enjoyed the course and I look forward to seeing you all in class. Have a good day.